Cameron Boyce from Disney Channel's Jesse and Descendants was an actor, dancer, humanitarian, and a beloved son and brother who lost his life to epilepsy just months ago. Cameron was central in our family and just at our core. Everything kind of spread out from him. The party didn't start until he got there. Cameron was athletic. He loved the Lakers and he loves music. We realized that he could dance when he was four. And he did ballet, hip hop, jazz, breaking. Not only could he dance, but there was this joy that emanated from him. The dancing was the beginning of everything for him. Yes. Jesse! You ruined everything! Okay, people have got to stop saying that when I enter a room. When Cameron was first cast in Jesse, people would tell me, wow, that's your son? That's my favorite character on that show. So it was really life-changing for us. People were really drawn to him, and we used to call it the cutimus ray, because he would shoot him with the cutimus ray. Cameron had his first seizure when he was 16 and a half. It was in his sleep. It was a night when he had two friends sleeping over and they witnessed it. And about a year later, when he was 17, he had another seizure. And at that point, he was diagnosed with epilepsy. He only ever had five seizures in his life. We thought because he had it so infrequently that it wasn't gonna be debilitating because he always had them in his sleep. And the worst thing that would happen was he would bite his tongue and he would wake up with a headache. On July 5th, Cameron, Maya, my daughter, Libby and I went to dinner. We were sitting outside joking and laughing like we always do. It was just a really fun night. So dinner was over. I said, I love you, son. Love you, dad. In the morning, I get a call from his roommate. And then he told me it was like all of a sudden I was like in a cloud. Like was just in a, like everything just went white. I'm just losing my mind in the parking lot. I tell my daughter, we're both screaming and crying, and I'm driving, I get on the freeway going the wrong way. I still didn't believe it. There was no way this was true. It was just a nightmare. When we pull up to his house, there was cop cars all over the place. Cameron died of SUDEP. He was sleeping, and he just never woke up. The first time I'd ever heard that term, was two months after Cameron passed when the medical examiner told me that's what he died of. I feel as though I'm in a tunnel. The tunnel will always be there. I will never be out of the tunnel. So if people say, you come out the other side, you do not come out the other side from this kind of a loss, ever. I'm not supposed to outlive my son. There's one picture in particular, his high school senior picture. That picture just rips me apart. There's something about the look on his face. <laughs> I can't walk past that picture. It's like he's looking through me. It's the only one in the house that's like it. It almost like haunts me, but it's like, damn, why are you looking at me like that, Cameron? All the other ones are smiling, but this picture is like his eyes are piercing. And it's like so hard. Cameron was my sunshine. He loved us so deeply, and we loved him so deeply. Cameron was very involved with an agency called The Thirst Project, which builds wells in third world countries to bring clean water to communities. He was a giver, and he was somebody who took care of others. What you leave should be bigger than you. And in today's world, there's no reason why you shouldn't. Since Cameron's passing, our goal through the Cameron Boyce Foundation is to bring awareness to epilepsy. I think what Cameron left behind is the blueprint on how to be a good person. Mm. Because he was, and he led by example. There's no words to describe how mm. proud we are of him. We just hope that what we're doing now will make him proud of us. Victor and Libby Boyce are determined to raise awareness about sudden death and epilepsy or suit up. That's the condition that tragically ended their son's life at the ripe age of 20. Sally Schaefer is here, the director of the Epilepsy Foundation's Suit Up Institute, to talk a little bit more about something that I think far too few people are aware of. And you're not just an advocate, you also have dealt with this in your own life. Absolutely. I lost my own daughter. Um, she was diagnosed with a rare nocturnal epilepsy. And less than a year later, she died on Mother's Day. She never woke up. I'm sorry. Mm. Can you talk about how you, how you kind of went from the role of, of being a mother, lost your daughter, and, and now an advocate for, for suit up? She's definitely put me in this seat. Um, it, I always say it's the job I never wanted because I lost her, and that's why I'm here. Um, but it's important to educate and bring awareness and be an advocate for this. 
because although one in 1,000 people with epilepsy may die from it, it's important to educate them and empower them with information so they know how to take care of themselves and how to handle their epilepsy, how do they talk to their physicians so that they know more about their own epilepsy. What can people do to lower their risk? Well, it's important to reduce the number of seizures that you have. That is what you need to concentrate is to be seizure free. And that is going to the doctor off, you know, as regularly scheduled. And even if you're seizure free, going to the doctor, making sure that you're on the right medications, you have, you're on the right dosage, um, but also reducing any seizure triggers. If stress causes your seizures, make sure you try to reduce your stress. Getting regularly scheduled sleep, making sure you're taking your medication regularly and on time, um, and you know, just making sure you're living that healthy lifestyle um, as well, making sure you're not drinking alcohol or taking illicit drugs um, so that you can stay healthy and reduce the number of seizures that you have. The reality of seizures, just for everyone watching, is they're incredibly unpredictable because during a seizure what happens is these bursts of electrical activity in certain areas of the brain and no two are exactly alike that activity can cause different symptoms depending on what type of seizure also what part of the brain is involved which individual the seizure is occurring in and of course you can be diagnosed formally with epilepsy at any stage or any um, age in life 